What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Join Ninja Nation. Be a part of the biggest and best daily baseball show on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Seth Lugo, who had seven strikeouts in six innings, giving up two runs. He had these two buzzsaw sweepers at 3,161 RPMs and 3,224 RPMs. He faced Chase Anderson, who had three Ks in six and a third innings, giving up two runs, and had this slider and changeup. Reed Detmers had seven Ks in four innings, giving up no earned runs, and had his fastball sliders and his changeups, which I thought looked really good. He only throws those changeups 4% of the time on the year, and my guess is we're going to be seeing more changeups from Reed Detmers. Detmers outdueled Aaron Savali, who had seven Ks in three innings, but gave up six runs. He picked up Ks on his fastballs, including this two-seamer, as well as this cutter and curveball. Lucas Giolito had six strikeouts in five and a third innings, giving up three earned runs. He had these fastballs and sliders. Giolito battled Zach Greinke, who had five Ks in three and two-thirds innings, giving up two runs. He had his fastballs up to 90 miles an hour, as well as this changeup. Josiah Gray had four strikeouts in five innings, giving up one run and had this fastball and sweeper. Aaron Nola had eight Ks in six innings, giving up two runs. He had these fastballs, including this pretty front door two-seamer, as well as, of course, his knuckle curves and change-ups. He outdueled Bryce Elder, but Elder's pitching did lead to this amazing catch off this home run ball. Look at this one-handed grab while holding his little girl. What a clutch catch. He saved his other daughter and also didn't drop the little girl he was holding over the railing. Well done. George Kirby had three Ks in seven innings, giving up three runs and had these painted fastballs. He faced Joey Estes, who was making his MLB debut, and he had two Ks in four and two-thirds innings, giving up five earned runs, but got a K on this slider. Justin Steele had six Ks in three innings, but gave up six runs, and raised his ERA now to three. He picked up Ks on these fastballs and slider. And he faced Mitch Keller, who also didn't have a great outing, with six strikeouts and five and two-thirds innings, giving up seven runs. Keller did have this painted two-seamer, this sweeper, and cutter. Adrian Hauser had four Ks in six innings, giving up one run, and had this front door sinker, as well as this slider. And he faced Zach Thompson, who had four Ks in five innings, giving up four runs, and had this fastball and cutter. Merrill Kelly had five Ks in six and two-thirds innings, giving up one run. He had these sinkers, and here's a home plate view of one of his sinkers, as well as these change-ups, and here's a home plate view of his change-up, as well as his curveball, and here's a home plate view of that curveball. The D-backs must have been showing off their umpire cam yesterday, which is totally cool by me. Kelly faced Logan Webb, who had four Ks in six innings, giving up three runs, and had this change-up and slider. Kyle Bradish went six innings with nine Ks, nice, giving up no runs, also nice, and only two hits. He really had his breaking stuff working. I mean, check out these sliders and curveballs. Pure filth. And he faced Christian Javier, who had 11 Ks in five innings, giving up one run on only two hits. Javier looked back to his old self with these fastballs, sliders, and changeups. Definitely one of the best games Javier's pitched all year. Kodai Senga had three Ks in six innings, giving up two runs and seven hits. He got Ks on these ghost forks, but honestly, I didn't think Senga had anywhere near his best stuff. And the cool part about it is he still battled and even picked up the win. I know we usually don't care that much about wins, but sometimes I think they're important. And this is one of those times when a pitcher battles without his best stuff and keeps his team in the game. Senga now has the second lowest ERA in the National League at 2.96, jumping ahead of Justin Steele. Senga faced another rookie, Ayuri Perez, who also definitely wasn't at his best. He only had two Ks in three innings and gave up three walks but had these nasty sliders, and here's an overlay of his fastball and slider. And you can see why Pete Alonso swung at that slider in the dirt, because it looks so much like a fastball the entire way to the plate. Bobby Miller had a good game yesterday with seven strikeouts and six innings, giving up two runs. He had these overpowering fastballs up to 100 miles an hour, and even hit 100 on his 98th pitch of the game. He also had these absolute hammer curveballs and nasty sliders. Really good stuff from Miller. And he faced Reese Olsen, who also looked outstanding with five strikeouts and six innings, giving up only one run on two hits. Olsen had this two-seamer just a tiny bit off the plate, as well as these absolutely wicked sliders over 3,000 RPMs, this dirty changeup, and 
This filthy curveball. I'm a huge fan of resoles and stuff. And continuing to build up his confidence and experience, he's going to be a good pitcher in this league for a long time to come. Kevin Gosman was outstanding yesterday with 10 strikeouts and 6 innings, giving up 3 hits and no runs. He dominated the Yankees yesterday with his usual mix of fastballs and splitters and picked up this sword. He faced Michael King, who was absolutely brilliant with 13 strikeouts and 7 innings, giving up only 1 run. This was the most case of any Yankee pitcher all season. King mowed down the Blue Jays lineup with his combination of fastballs, two-seamers, including his painted two-seamer, and these vicious sweepers and change-ups, picking up a few swords along the way. As you can see in these pitch breakdowns, he really spread out his strikeouts with six strikeouts on a sinker, three on his four-seamer, three on his sweeper, and one on his change-up. Here are a couple of overlays of King's two-seamers and sweepers. And you can see what makes King so tough to hit. His pitches have a ton of movement, and he's really good at tunneling them. Michael King has looked fantastic down the stretch. And these outings have to ensure him of his spot in the Yankees' starting pitching rotation next year. Or else the Yankees are nuts, because Michael King right now is a force to be reckoned with. Bailey Ober had three Ks in five innings, giving up two runs, and had this fastball and slider. And he battled yesterday's other filthiest starting pitcher of the day. I forgot to mention Michael King is a co-filthiest starting pitcher of the day. Tied with Hunter Green. Green had 14 strikeouts in seven innings, giving up only one run and three hits. This was the most strikeouts in a game by a Reds pitcher since 2000, over 20 years. Green had his overpowering fastballs up to 100 miles an hour, as well as these nasty sliders. And he took a shutout into the seventh inning. Amazingly, he picked up these 14 Ks on only 92 pitches. Total dominance. To show how Green gets it done, here's an overlay of his fastball and slider. And you can see how he tunnels those two pitches, and then that slider breaks out of the swing path just as you're ready to swing. Not a ton of movement, but enough movement to get the whiff. And here's a look at Hunter Green's pitch breakdown for the game. I still think there's room for Green to improve even more as he uses his changeup more, or develops a splitter. I talked about this to Manny Ramirez and Dontrell Willis on the FanDuel broadcast of the game yesterday, and both of them agreed. If you only throw two pitches, it's really easy to eliminate one if one isn't working. Now, obviously, when they're both working, you have outings like this, but sometimes you're going to have to battle, and giving yourself a third pitch is a great way to still keep hitters off balance if your fastball or slider isn't working. But anyway, a fantastic outing by Hunter Green. He shows flashes of greatness, and there's so much upside there. Now onto my filthiest relievers. Brian Abreu had this 98-mile-an-hour elevated heater. Tommy Canely picked up a strike on what might be one of the worst calls I've seen all year. My initial reaction was, what the f***? But Lance Barrett was terrible both ways yesterday. In fact, Aaron Boone got ejected from this game early because of Barrett's strike zone. Andres Munoz had this 100-mile-an-hour heater. Chad Green had this curveball and fastball. Thaddeus Ward had this amazingly deceptive sinker. Look how fast that thing drops. Jordan Hicks had this painted sweeper. Ryan Thompson had this slider. Jalen Beeks picked up five Ks in two innings, thanks to his ultra-funky arm action and these cutters and change-ups. Bruce Dark Gratterall had this hip-shot two-seamer. Jimmy the Human Glitch Herget had this nasty curveball. Will Vest had these overpowering fastballs. And my filthiest reliever of the day yesterday was Joan Duran for this perfectly painted splinker and this 103 mile an hour gas. And now my pitching ninja moment of Zen. I've watched a ton of baseball in my life, but I've never seen this. It is a giant bubble delay. Yep, the Dodgers game was delayed because of a giant bubble over the field. And no, it is not a Chinese spy bubble. What is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are three-leg parlay. I'm going to start out with Max Fried for 5Ks or more, then take Zach Eflin for 7Ks or more, and top it off with Tarek Skubal for 7Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 